Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Here is my in-depth review for the S24 Ultra after spending more than a week with this phone as my daily driver to share with you all the pros and cons I came across and to compare it against the competition to give you a clear idea about its capabilities. So without further ado, let's jump in. Starting with the design, it looks very similar to the S23 Ultra, but it feels totally different. The titanium rail with the matte finish makes the S24 Ultra a lot more elegant in terms of the look and feel in hand, with no fingerprints if you are planning to use it without a case. Aesthetically, Samsung made a lot of better choices this year. Like the completely flat front and back fits this boxy design a lot more than the curved ones. I also like the new speaker cutout as it looks more modern, plus the even and noticeably thinner bezels of the display made things even better. So things fit together like never before which I didn't expect to make a big difference in my experience before trying the phone myself. The color choices this year is another step in the right direction. In my opinion the grey titanium which is the one I have here looked the best but I would still be happy if I got it in purple, black or yellow as all of them look great. Plus you have even more choices to pick from that are exclusive to the online store. So that's everything I like about the new design, so let's talk about the things that remain the same. First, the sharp corners that makes it less comfortable to hold are still there. The volume rocker's placement is too high for my taste, especially after getting used to the Pixel 8 Pro with more reachable buttons. It's only 1 gram less than the S23 Ultra even though it uses titanium. I don't have a problem with the weight, but I expected more. Lastly, the loudspeaker placement bothers me every time I use it in landscape. I always rotate my phone anti-clockwise, and because the speaker is on the left, I easily cover it when I rest my hand, while the 15 Pro Max and the 8 Pro have it on the other side, so I don't face this problem. In this case, it's better to rotate the S24 Ultra in the other direction to avoid this from happening, which requires some getting used to. When it comes to the build quality, as expected from Samsung, the S24 Ultra is very solid. But what's new this year is the Gorilla Glass Armor. It has three advantages over the Victus 2. The 75% less reflective service which I'm gonna talk about in detail later. As per Samsung it performs 3 times better in drops and 4 times more scratch resistant. As per Jerry Rig everything the scratches become visible at level 7 with deeper grooves at level 8 which is one level higher than the competition and that's promising. But I will share my real life experience in the long term review later this year. So overall in the design and build quality the S24 Ultra exceeded my expectations in many areas and despite the issues that bothers me I would give it 8 out of 10 for going the extra mile. And now let's talk about the display. Right off the bat this is one of the best if not the best display I've ever seen in any smartphone for good reasons. It's not only brighter than the 15 Pro Max and the Pixel 8 Pro thanks to the 2600 nits, but also the anti-reflective feature of the Gorilla Glass Armor is a huge deal. Look at how it handles the sunlight. When I tilt the phones I see nothing on the other two screens while most of the S24 Ultra screen is still visible and when I look straight at it there is almost zero reflections and things are crystal clear unlike others. Even indoors I can see the difference. This feature alone gives me a pleasing experience when I use the S24 Ultra. But I wanted to know does the display remain anti-reflective with the screen protector on? Unfortunately the answer is no. Once I applied my screen protector I started to see the same reflections like any other phone in this side by side comparison you can see how the S24 Ultra with and without screen protector looks next to other phones. So for you to enjoy this feature you need to either use your phone without protection or get a matte finish screen protector that might impact the clarity which is a bummer either way. But hopefully the improved scratch and drop resistance of Gorilla Glass Armor will make us more comfortable to use our phones without a screen protector to take advantage out of this amazing feature. So let's wait and see how it will age over time. Moving to the scrolling and the animations, the S24 Ultra is very snappy and you will immediately notice the difference if you owned the previous models. Samsung also improved the PWM dimming to reach 492 Hz versus 480 on the 15 Pro Max and 246 on the 8 Pro. The higher the number, the less eye strain in low brightness. In this example, you can see the S24 Ultra display refreshes faster than the other two. 492 Hz is not the best in the market as phones like the OnePlus 12 can reach 2160 Hz, but it's definitely better than the 240 Hz of the S23 Ultra of last year, which is good news for those who have sensitive eyes. Plus it has the highest resolution across the bunch and the very thin and even bezels elevates the experience even further. And as expected from Samsung, it has to copy Apple in few things every year and this time we got the adaptive tone which is the same thing as Apple's True Tone, 
both change the display white balance based on the environment around you, plus the ability to show the wallpaper on the always on display. Overall, the display of the S24 Ultra is above and beyond the competition in many areas, but I recommend if Samsung can make its own anti reflective screen protector to avoid losing its anti reflective ability with the normal ones. And that's the only thing I hope for. And now let's move on to the performance and battery. Starting with the performance, it's a bit complicated to explain my experience with the S24 Ultra, so I will classify it into two sections, normal and heavy usage. In my normal usage, the phone flies, the animations are fluid, the scrolling is smooth, the gaming experience is great, and overall it feels snappier than the S23 Ultra, which is expected from the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the 92% bigger cooling system. But under stress, it's worse than its predecessor. If you are familiar with my heavy workload test, the S23 Ultra passed this test four times since I got my hands on it and lost it once in December 2023 after giving a thermal warning at the 27 minutes mark. In contrast, the S24 Ultra gave a thermal warning after 18 minutes and stopped the picture-in-picture -picture window in two separate trials. In my opinion, one of these three reasons is behind this. It's either One UI 6 is more aggressive than One UI 5 in throttling as the S23 Ultra failed for the first time after One UI 6 and never did with One UI 5. The second reason is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is so powerful, so when I put it under stress, it produces more heat than its predecessor, which is also the case with the 15 Pro Max that never won this test and both share almost the same Geekbench score. Or maybe the phone is relatively new and Samsung needs more time to optimize the software. Either way, I will wait for a few months and revisit this test to see which one of these reasons is the closest to reality. As we speak in normal usage, the S24 Ultra won't let you down and it's certainly faster than its predecessor, but is it better in multitasking? This question is to be answered in my future videos. Moving to the battery, I'm getting a great experience. You all know that Samsung removed the screen on time since last full charge and replaced it with the 24 hours window, which is very confusing. And the way I use my phone didn't allow me to keep track of the exact figures. But sometimes I end the day with 30 to 40% battery, which is insanely good and much better than the S23 Ultra. But the charging speed remains the same as last year's model at 45 watts wired and 15 watt wireless. Maybe the speed is not as crazy as the 100 watt we see with the other Chinese brands, but for me it's good enough as I always charge my phone once overnight and it's better to charge it at lower speed to avoid aging faster. Overall, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is a beast when it comes to efficiency and the battery life exceeded my expectations. Now let's talk about the camera. If you are looking for the best camera to take photos, I don't recommend the S24 Ultra for this matter, so let me explain why. The first issue is the big inconsistency in colors reproduction in different scenarios. This shot was taken with the main camera at 12, 50 and 200 megapixels. The 12 megapixel shot looks natural and balanced. The 50 megapixel one is dark and the 200 megapixel is overexposed with messed up colors. The new 5X telephoto that also supports 50 megapixel photos suffers from the same problem. This time the 12 megapixel is dark and the 50 megapixel is overexposed. And the same scenario applies to the night photos like in this example using the main camera. And it's even worse when it comes to the 5X telephoto at night. So if that's my daily driver, I will certainly avoid taking high resolution photos with this phone, not only because they look different, but they don't look good either. When you compare this to the Pixel, the 12 and 50 megapixel shots coming from any lens look exactly the same. This is the telephoto, the main, and the ultra wide. The inconsistency issue shows up again at different zoom levels. This shot was taken only at 12 megapixel from 3x up to 30x. You will notice here the higher the zoom, the different the colors and exposure. Again, comparing that to the pixel from 5x up to 30x, I'm getting the same exact look, same as the 15 Pro Max. The third issue is the two saturated colors day and night most of the time. In this example, all phones are set to 12 megapixel and every time I take a shot, I look at the scene closely and compare this to what I see on the screen to confirm which one is the most accurate. Almost 100% of the time, the pixel is the most accurate, followed by the 15 Pro Max and the S24 Ultra is a bit far with a lot of saturation, especially when you look at the sky and the water in these example photos. When it comes to the macros, the pixel and the iPhone dominate this area with tons of details and sharp focus across the whole image, while the S24 Ultra macros come out blurry on the sides and only the center part is in focus, which doesn't look as nice. Samsung also switched to the new 50 megapixel 5X telephoto, same as the Pixel 8 Pro, which is a step in the right direction, but the results are not as great as I expected. 
This is a quick comparison at 12 megapixel. You will see here that the 8 Pro has a cleaner image while the S24 Ultra shot looks over sharpened with a noticeable amount of noise in the dark areas. Moving to the 50 megapixel version on both, as expected, it messed up the colors quite a lot as I mentioned earlier, plus it looks over sharpened and washed out. Not only this, but when you zoom beyond 5x with the 50 megapixel mode activated, the resolution keeps getting down. In this screen recording, you will see that at 5x I'm getting a 50 megapixel photo, at 7x it's only 25, then it goes down to 12 megapixel at 10x, which is the maximum zoom level in this mode while the 8 Pro produces 50 megapixel shots up to 30x zoom. Lastly, the night portraits always come over sharpened and the skin tone is too yellow at 1 and 2x as shown in these examples. I see that these are major issues that I always face with Samsung cameras, but let me also show you the things that I like. First, the HDR. In this ultra wide shot, the S24 Ultra and the 8 Pro balanced the shadows and the highlights equally good, but still the 8 Pro is dominating this area because when you look at the shadows you will see how noisier is the S24 Ultra shot, but still it's a big improvement over its predecessor. And I'm not sure what Apple is trying to do here with these black shadows and the sun that looks like a dot. Here's another example using the main camera and the same story repeats itself. The gap between the 8 Pro and the S24 Ultra is less when compared to the ultra wide version and thankfully the iPhone decided to show the real sun in this shot but we still have the same black shadows as usual. Moving to the 3x telephoto on the S24 Ultra and the 5x on the other two, it's hard to compare different zoom levels but the S24 Ultra has the least number of flares, the shadows and the highlights are well exposed, the only issue is the sky banding around the sun but other than this it's a very good shot. Moving to 5x across the board, again the S24 Ultra has almost no lens flares followed by the 15 Pro Max and the 8 Pro comes third. But beside this, the 8 Pro has the best overall shot for the highest level of detail in the shadows and the most realistic look for the sun. The 15 Pro Max and the S24 Ultra look almost identical in this scenario with the same dark shadows and unrealistic sun. So I will give the second place to the S24 Ultra for the less lens flares and the 15 Pro Max comes third. And when it comes to night photos, the S24 Ultra is the best in handling the bright lights. Here's the 5X telephoto, the ultra wide, and finally the main camera. The second good thing about this camera is the morning portraits as they look very nice. The 15 Pro Max is still the best for its vibrant colors and the more realistic subject isolation, but the S24 Ultra is not far behind. The 8 Pro comes a third as usual for its poor subject isolation and dark shadows, but this doesn't apply to the 5x portraits. In this scenario, when you take a normal 5x photo on the pixel and apply the blur effect after the fact, it will give you the most pleasing shot, followed by the 15 Pro Max, and the S24 Ultra comes third for being a bit soft and dark, so you need to keep that in mind. Third, the front camera of the S24 Ultra is great with tons of details, great HDR and colors. Overall, it has a great quality while the pixel selfies look so dull and less detailed in comparison. In complete darkness with the night mode activated, it's the second best in terms of colors and details after the 15 Pro Max and better than the iPhone in clearing the noise. The only downside is the field of view is noticeably narrower than the other two phones. So overall when it comes to the photos I see a lot of disadvantages when compared to the competition and the only few good things that are not big enough to give it the lead. But if we're gonna talk about the camera without taking the competition in consideration, it's certainly more than good enough for any average consumer. Moving to the videos, the Samsung's ultra wide has the best HDR but the 15 Pro Max colors are the most accurate while the Pixel has a magenta hue, so it's a draw between the Galaxy and the iPhone and the Pixel comes third. Switching to the main camera, the S24 Ultra is the darkest for some reason, so the other two look nicer with the edge going to the iPhone for the better colors. The Galaxy's 3x telephoto videos are a bit soft and lacks details, so I prefer the 2x videos of the other two. And lastly, the 15 Pro Max takes the noisiest and less detailed 5x videos while the Pixel looks the sharpest, and the S24 Ultra is somewhere in between. But when I used Video Boost that only works with the main camera on the 8 Pro, it provided the best HDR and details, the stabilization is significantly better as if the phone is mounted to a tripod, while I can see my handshake in the other videos. When it comes to the stabilization without using any special modes, there is almost no difference between them in the ultra wide comparison. Switching to the main camera, the 15 Pro Max and the S24 Ultra look equally good with the smoothest stabilization, while the pixel is a bit stiff, resulting in a more aggressive shake. The S24 Ultra 3x telephoto has good stabilization, but after switching to 5x, it had a weird jello effect. 
the 15 Pro Max is still the best and the 8 Pro was jumping like crazy. So overall the win goes to the 15 Pro Max followed by the S24 Ultra and the Pixel comes third. But once more with video boost the Pixel produced the best stabilization across the board followed by the 15 Pro Max and the S24 Ultra comes third. Moving to the front videos the S24 Ultra was the darkest and had the most blown out sky but with a good level of detail. The 15 Pro Max was the best in everything and the 8 Pro video had better HDR than the S24 Ultra but lacks details. And with the sun facing me the S24 Ultra blown out my face more than others followed by the 15 Pro Max while the Pixel was the best in handling this. So it's a win for the iPhone and I will call it a draw between the 8 Pro and the S24 Ultra. At night things get worse for all of them. The Pixel has the worst ultra wide video performance with blown out lights, a lot of noise and washed out colors. The S24 Ultra has the most saturated colors, same blown out lights as the Pixel but with less noise so it comes second. While the 15 Pro Max is the best in handling the noise and the producing balanced colors. Moving to the main camera things improved quite a lot for all of them but the same rankings still apply. The 15 Pro Max is first, the S24 Ultra is second and the 8 Pro comes third. Looking at the 3x telephoto of the S24 Ultra the video is noisy especially at the bottom half but overall the quality is decent. The 15 Pro Max is still on top even though it's a 2x digital crop instead of optical like the Samsung and the Pixel comes third. At 5x I found it hard to declare a winner as each one has its own weaknesses and strengths but overall I like the S24 Ultra video the most as it looks very sharp and stable. My second favorite is the 15 Pro Max even though I like the Pixel's better details over the iPhone but its poor stabilization made things a lot worse. Using video boost on the Pixel allowed it to produce the least blown out lights, the best stabilization and sharp details, but the sky is too noisy. Both the 15 Pro Max and the S24 Ultra kept the exposure under control, but the edge goes to the iPhone for the better colors and details than the S24 Ultra. Overall the 8 Pro and the 15 Pro Max are the best in their own ways, while the S24 Ultra doesn't look as good. Comparing the stabilization at night without any special modes, the 15 Pro Max is the best when it comes to the ultra wide, which you can see when you look at the lights, while the S24 Ultra and the 8 Pro are pretty much the same. In the main camera, surprisingly, the S24 Ultra is the best, the 15 Pro Max and the 8 Pro are about the same, which wasn't the case with the morning videos. Lastly, at 5x, none of them was good but certainly the 15 Pro Max is the best option followed by the S24 Ultra and the 8 Pro was kinda miss. Overall the 15 Pro Max was the best in the ultra wide and telephoto, the S24 Ultra was the best in the main camera and the Pixel didn't win any of them. And the only way to get good results out of the Pixel in this situation is to use video boost with the main camera which gives it the lead in the stabilization at night same as the morning followed by the S24 Ultra and the 15 Pro Max comes third. Switching to the front camera the 15 Pro Max has the least amount of noise, the lights are well exposed but the subject is a bit dark. The subject in the S24 Ultra and the Pixel videos is more visible but with a lot more noise and the S24 Ultra is the worst in handling the lights. While walking the 15 Pro Max has the best stabilization followed by the S24 Ultra and the Pixel comes third. Even though the S24 Ultra video is more stable than the Pixel but it has much worse HDR so overall it's my least favorite, the 15 Pro Max is the best and the 8 Pro comes second. Overall if you are looking for the best phone for videos with no doubt the 15 Pro Max is the best option. The S24 Ultra and the Pixel have more weaknesses than the iPhone but the edge goes to the S24 Ultra for having a lot more features like the ability to record 8K videos, record cinematic videos in 4K using the front and back cameras versus 1080p on the Pixel only with the main lens and a 2.8K super steady videos versus 1080p on the Pixel. So to sum up the whole camera experience in photos, the 8 Pro comes first followed by the 15 Pro Max and the S24 Ultra comes third. And for videos, the 15 Pro Max comes first followed by the S24 Ultra and the 8 Pro comes third. Now let's talk about the software. The S24 Ultra comes with One UI 6.1 which has a lot of cool features and for the first time Samsung followed the trend and promised 7 years of OS updates which is a huge deal. But what makes the S24 Ultra stand out over its predecessor even more is the new AI features. Samsung added a long list of tools under what they call Galaxy AI. Some of them are unique while others are just Google Pixel clones. But the question is are they good enough to make a difference in your experience? 
The answer is yes, but not all of them. I did a separate video comparing most of them with the ones available on the Pixel 8 Pro. So if you are interested to get a detailed answer, you will find the video link in the description. But let me summarize it and show you the good and not so good features. Starting with the good ones, when you tap and hold on any video in your gallery while playing, it becomes a slow motion video. It simply uses AI to create extra frames on the fly to make it possible. Plus you have the ability to create a slow motion version of this video under the editing tools and save it for future use. And when you use it on a video already recorded in slow motion, you can get insane results. For example, if you recorded a slow-mo video in 120 frames at quarter speed, you can convert it into 1 over 16. And the 240 frames slow-mo video can go as low as 1 over 32x, which will allow you to see details that you have never seen before. And the best part is it works with any video regardless if it's recorded on the S24 Ultra or not. But there are some important tips to keep in mind. It only works on videos with a resolution between 720p up to 4K, so 8K is not supported, and you cannot use it on HDR10 plus videos either. Number two is the ability to rotate any image and let generative AI fill in the gaps for you instead of losing parts of the photo and it works well all the time. Third, the notes app has a lot of useful AI features like the ability to summarize your notes in a standard or a detailed format and save or replace the results. The auto formatting that cleans up the mess by adding headers, bullets and different styling options in few seconds you can correct all the grammar, spelling, and the punctuation mistakes with the ability to review the changes before saving and to finally translate your notes in 17 different languages with a click of a button. Number four, the AI wallpapers, which is the same one on the Pixel 8, but with nine themes instead of 12, it generates amazing wallpapers and very easy to use. Number five, the keyboard got some features similar to the notes app, like the writing styles to rephrase your words in different ways, translate your chats in 17 different languages and see the results in line or correct the spelling and the grammar mistakes and what I like is the ability to use them anywhere throughout the OS. Number six is circle to search which gives you a quick and easy way to search for whatever you see on the screen in Google Lens. Number seven and the last one in this list is the ability to summarize web pages in Samsung internet app which saves you a lot of time reading articles with the ability to choose between a standard or a detailed summary. So these are the best AI features I found on the S24 Ultra and now let's talk about the not so good AI features. The first one is editing photos with AI. I compared it to the Pixel's Magic Editor and there is a day and night difference in the quality. In this example, I moved myself to the side and further away. The S24 Ultra didn't generate the missing part of my legs like the 8 Pro and it messed up the generated area behind me. Plus, I didn't get multiple options nor the ability to regenerate new results like on the Pixel. So you are stuck with whatever it gives you, but let's hope things will improve in the future. Secondly, the voice recorder AI features are not as good as the ones on the Pixel. First, it doesn't transcribe on the fly, but you have to record first and then transcribe after the fact. It doesn't identify the different sounds that might occur in the recording like music, animals, etc and it's not as accurate either. Overall, Samsung did really well in giving more attention to AI, which is a step in the right direction, but if this is something important to you, still the Pixel 8 Pro is the way to go, because if the same feature exists on both, it will give you the better quality. Plus, it can do more, like best take, which will allow you to swap people's faces or audio magic eraser to mute individual sounds from your videos. Samsung also confirmed that its AI features will be free till 2025, then you might need to pay a subscription. It's not clear yet what features they talk about, but paying a subscription on top of the $1,300 price tag doesn't make any sense to me. So let's wait and see what's gonna happen. Now let's end this video by talking about the essentials, starting with the speakers. Unfortunately, they are not great. They are loud, but distorted and lack bass. For the haptics, they are quite good, but in my experience, it comes in the third spot after the 8 Pro and the 15 Pro Max, respectively. People also ask me about the cellular reception and Wi-Fi. Let me tell you that I have an amazing signal and Wi-Fi router, so I never had an issue with any of my phones, and the S24 Ultra is no exception. But if we're gonna talk about normal speed tests on Wi-Fi, the 8 Pro was always the fastest, followed by the 15 Pro Max, and the S24 Ultra comes third, but the differences are small. All. On 5G, the 15 Pro Max was the fastest, followed by the S24 Ultra, and the 8 Pro is no way near, it's almost half the speed of the other two. So that's everything I wanted to cover, and here's my final conclusion after using the S24 Ultra for more than a week and losing the wow factor of any new product. 
At $1300 price tag, I expected this phone to be the best in everything, but unfortunately, it's not. Yes, it exceeded my expectations in the display, design, software support, and battery, but in other things like the camera, AI, speakers, and haptics, I would say the 8 Pro would be the better option at a much lower price with the same 7 years of OS updates. And if you are looking for the best phone for videos and the great photos too, the 15 Pro Max is also a better option. I only recommend the S24 Ultra if you are into One UI's massive number of features and customizations and the S Pen which comes in handy in some scenarios. That's when you will feel that these new improvements are worth it as they add some extras to what you already like. But if you are not sure which one to choose, set your priorities and based on what you have seen, pick the one that delivers the things that matter to you the most or maybe wait for some time as usually Samsung phones quickly lose the resale value so you can get it at a cheaper price. So I think that's pretty much it for today. That was my review for the S24 Ultra. Please let me know in the comments what do you think. But for now, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.